going to be fine. Oh, we're on. Right, OK. So, uh, this is core two from uh, whenever it was, May 2012, and we're on question eight, factor and remainder theorem, the kind of stuff. Two cubic polynomials are given there. Um, What's this red thing yeah. on the screen? Is that any help? Red one, yellow. It's 2b. <laughs> and uh, g of x is 3x cubed plus x squared plus 5ax plus 4b, where a and b are constants. Given that, they have a common factor of x minus 2, show that a is minus 4 and find the value of b. Um, what does that mean then? Bear in mind what we've just written down about the factor and the main theorem. What are we, we going to try straight away? <coughs> Put in the minus 2, that if x minus 2 is a factor, then that means we can interpret that line there as meaning that f of 2 and g of 2 are both equal to 0. Because x minus 2 is a factor of both of those things. So if we deal with these two things separately, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say that 2 cubed plus a minus 3 times 2 plus 2b is equal to zero. I'm uh, tidying that up a bit, I think. What have we got there? We've got um, 8 plus 2a minus 6 plus 2b is equal to zero. Um, there's a lot of 2s going on there. 2a plus 2b plus 2 is zero. So if we divide everything by 2, a plus b, let's do that, a plus b is minus 1. That, that's got as an equation linking a and b. That was, that was f of 2, wasn't it? So now let's do the same thing with g of 2. Um, g of 2 would be 3 times 2 cubed. And then we'd have plus 2 squared. 5a times 2, 2 then, um, plus 4b would also be equal to 0. So here we've got that, that was supposed to be 2 squared in there. We've got 8 times 2 would be 24, add another 4 would be 28, I think, plus 10a plus 4b is 0. Can we divide everything by 2 again? And let's say that 5a plus 2b is negative 14. Um, it, we've got simultaneous equations, haven't we? It's called equation 1 and 2. And uh, we just need to solve these for a and b. Well, let's, let's make sure we're on the right lines. We know that a is going to be minus 4. So let's, let's find a first. So let's sub b in. Equation 1 implies that b equals minus 1 minus a. So 5a plus 2 times minus 1 minus a is negative 14. Or oh, what we've got, 5a minus 2a minus 2 is negative 14. 3a is minus 12. Bit of a relief, a is minus 4. So we're, we're heading on the right lines. Up here we've got an equation for b. b is minus 1 minus negative 4. So b comes out as being 3. That, that's quite neat, isn't it? We ended up um, with those two values. And that was that was 6 marks. So that's, that was quite a lot of unstructured stuff that we had to work our way through to get that. But notice the key was all about the factor theorem. Now, I think some people attempting this, faced with this bit here, will try and do something with long division. We'll try and do something with factorising these equations, because they both have factors of x minus 2. But if you see how much easier it is just to go straight to the factor theorem and use what the factor theorem tells us, and it falls out from there. Using these values of a and b, factorise f of x fully and show that they in fact have two common factors. Right, so f of x is 
Now that we know that a is minus 4 and b is 3, f of x is x cubed. Um, it was a minus 3, wasn't it? So that's now going to be minus 4 minus 3, x, and then it's 2b. So actually, f of x is x cubed minus 7x plus 6. Right, and uh, factorise f of x fully. Now we've got, we've got choices here, haven't we? One choice is that we can go straight to long division. Because we know that x minus 2 is one of the factors. So we could do that. We could dive straight in with long division. What are we going to have to be really careful of if we go straight to long division? No There's no x squared term, so we have to make sure we put a zero x squared term in when we do it. I think we don't need to go to long division because I think we probably know enough about the way that multiplying out brackets works to be able to say that if x minus 2 is a factor, then it would factorise like this. Now, in these two brackets, this one has to be x squared, doesn't it? Because that would be the only way we get x cubed. And at the end of the bracket, we must have a minus 3, because minus 2 times minus 3 would give us plus 6. And in the middle, well, to get, to get the, the minus 7x there, we could do that by doing x times minus 3 and minus 2 times what goes there. So that gives us minus 3 of them. Minus 2 times something needs to end up giving us minus 7. Well, minus 2, we need another minus 4, don't we? So it needs to be minus 2 times plus 2. That must be a plus 2x. In there. And we can check it because the x squared term was 0. This gives us minus 2x squared, this gives us plus 2x squared, so it works, doesn't it? We multiply it to give us 0. Check it by multiplying it out. If you want to do long division, then do long division. It's fine. But well, we can get there that little bit quicker. Um, it said factorise it fully. So having got that far, we need to finish what we're doing. Um, this factorises, doesn't it? And what would it need to be? A plus 3 and a minus 1. So we've got f of x factorised fully. It said, hence show that f of x and g of x have two common factors. Um, and I can, again, I can think of two ways of doing this. I'm not sure which way I want to do it. We could do the factor theorem again, because, because we now know that if you sub in 1 and minus 3, if it's true, one of them will give us 0 when we sub that in. And we could do it that way, or we could factorise g of x. I'm not sure which is going to be the easier one to do. g of x, if we use those values of a and b, is going to be 3x cubed plus x squared. Um, what was A? A was minus 4, wasn't it? <coughs> so that's minus 20x and B was 3, so that's plus 12. What do you reckon? I think, keep it simple with this, rather than go through all the, the hassle of factorising it, let's test out these values. G of 1 is 3 plus 1 minus 20 plus 12. That's minus 5, which, which isn't normally the same as 0. And if we try the other one, g of minus 3, we get, that would be minus 27, wouldn't it? Plus 9, uh, plus 60, plus 12. This, this is looking better, isn't it? Because this is negative 81. And this is well, 60 or 2 over 72 plus another 9 plus plus 81, which does equal 0. Therefore, x plus 3 is a factor of g of x. I messed out the word off there. That's all right. And, uh, and so we found it. We found that x plus 3 Of 
Okay. Now, what we could have done, what we could have done here, is we could have factorised g of x because we knew that x plus two, x minus two, was a factor of that, and then we could have done exactly what we did with f of x. But that was probably a, a slightly quicker, more efficient way of doing it. There we go. Happy with that? Great.